The MSI Claw is a curious device that, despite having the potential to be at the top of its niche, hasn't been all that successful. Many reviewers pointed out that the MSI Claw wasn't worth their time and certainly not their money and since its launch MSI has released constant updates to improve this inconsistent performance and we're going to see if any improvements have actually been made. The fact is it's not enough to call the MSI Claw a disappointment. ATA time when ranking among the best portable gaming PCs requires little more than a decent interface and competitive performance. The Claw stands out not for where it stands up to the competition, but for where it falls behind. Even two years after the original launch of the Steam Deck, there is some understanding that a period of growth follows the launch of any new laptop. Companies like Asus, Lenovo and now MSI have to navigate this new uncharted territory, and there are bound to be a few bumps along the way. Even with this understanding, however, Claw falls short of expectations. It's more expensive than the competition, but offers worse performance and inferior battery life, and that's the most important thing you need to know. You shouldn't buy the MSI Claw now on that basis alone. And given what I've seen out there, it's hard to imagine that MSI can put the Claw in a competitive position without launching an entirely new device. Here we are talking about a device that should be stable on practically all of these platforms, but the truth is that it didn't quite work out that way. The Claw is more expensive than the competition. That's before you bring in the Steam Deck and the Steam Deck OLED, both hundreds of dollars cheaper than the Claw. MSI doesn't do much to justify the price apart from having an Intel chip, which doesn't justify much. You're getting a 7-inch IPS screen that's capable of 1080p resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate, similar to the ROG Ally. It's a nice screen and games like Tetris Effect look fantastic on it but the Lenovo Legion Go boasts a higher resolution, while the Steam Deck OLED boasts, well, OLED. Frankly, there's no excuse for the Claw to be as expensive as it is compared to the conventional laptop market. It has slightly higher quality buttons and handles compared to the ROG Ally, and MSI made a big deal about the 53 watt-hour battery, but they're not enough to warrant such a premium. There's nothing that stands out here which is particularly problematic considering the high price MSI is asking and the low performance the CLAW offers. MSI has received some criticism for the derivative design of the CLAW compared to the ROG Ally, but there are enough changes here to make the CLAW stand out on its own. The feel in the hands is very similar, but MSI stands out with buttons and knobs that feel much more premium. Outside of the buttons you get a Micro South Dakota card slot, 3.5 headphone jack, a USB-C port with Thunderbolt 4 that you'll use for charging and a power button that supports Windows Hello with your fingerprint. The USB-C port is a big advantage over the ROG Ally as it supports external GPU enclosures. Externally the claw doesn't beat around the bush, but it doesn't fall flat on its face either. The laptop feels great in the hands, with high-quality controls, useful ports, and surprisingly good speakers. The MSI got this aspect of the claw right. Good thing, too, because the other aspects of the claw fall far short of expectations. The performance of the MSI claw is not good. It's not that the screen resolution is too high, as we saw with the Lenovo Legion Go. And it's not that it falls short in terms of internal hardware like the Ienio 2S. It's just below the competition, that's for sure. It doesn't matter which power mode you look at, either. The MSI Claw offers less performance than the competition, while consuming more power. Starting with the standard balanced mode, you can see how the Claw falls short of the ROG Ally with Z1 Extreme overall. The Claw gains a slight edge in Dying Light 2 and Returnal, but its losses in Horizon Zero Dawn and Cyberpunk 2077 stand out more. There's more to the story than the raw numbers here. In Dying Light 2, Claw records a higher overall performance, but it was also a stuttering mess. You can see how inconsistent he was in the figure. To put some numbers on it, the ROG Ally had a minimum of 18 frames per second. The Claw had a minimum of 5 FPS. Performance wasn't consistent either. In Cyberpunk 2077, the claws balanced in battery saver modes and we saw greater performance than the ROG Ally initially. 
The second time the tests were done, however, performance fell off a cliff and stayed there. I'm not sure if this is a problem with thermals or something else, but it is a problem, probably about TDP. Looking at CLAW alone, you have five different power modes performance, balanced, which is the default, battery saver, manual, and AI engine. AI engine adjusts aspects of the device automatically, but doesn't offer any increased performance. You can see how the various power modes work by looking at the image. If you've paid attention to the world of portable gaming devices, you'll notice that something is wrong here. The Core Ultra 7155H inside the MSI CLAW consumes a lot of power. This provides important context. The MSI CLAW is consuming twice as much power, but offering incredible, inferior performance. MSI released a new BIOS and driver for the CLAW at the end of June, and I looked at the new test results to see if there were any performance improvements. And to my surprise, there was. The MSI CLAW is much faster now than when it was originally released. Even with the performance improvements, however, it can only match devices like the ROG Ally. The biggest improvements are focused on lower power modes. When the device is at 40 watts, its maximum power, there is no difference in performance with the latest updates. While it's great to see MSI continuing to work on the CLAW, the performance improvements here simply bring the laptop in line with the rest of the market. MSI is still charging a premium for its device compared to the competition, and battery life still lags behind. These areas are even more important considering that the Asus ROG Ally X is already on the market, which completely outperforms the CLAW at almost the same price. Speaking briefly about its software and interface, the CenterM's interface isn't great, and you'll need to do a lot of digging to find settings that should be in obvious spots. But one might overlook this considering how quickly Center M responds and why CLAW has so many other problems. MSI made a big deal about the 53 watt hour battery inside the CLAW, but from tests, the increased capacity isn't enough to compensate for the higher power usage of the Meteor Lake CPU. In Cyberpunk 2077, I saw the CLAW die in just 1 hour and 15 minutes. Despite having a larger battery, the MSI CLAW has a worse battery life due to its power-hungry chip. So that's it, folks. Despite a flurry of driver and BIOS updates promising greater performance, the CLAW falls short of the competition as it consumes more power and, as a consequence, dies just as quickly despite its greater battery capacity. The software, despite running smoother than the ASUS and Lenovo options, also falls flat with limited options and an interface that deteriorates quickly if you get involved with features like adjusting the screen resolution. And that's it. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing and see you next time.